Hello, folks, and welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at some graphs. And today, we're going to be looking at some distance versus time graphs. Now, basically, what we're going to be doing with this activity is we're going to be taking a look at what does it look like when an object moves on a graph. And we're going to be trying to relate an object's movement with uh, drawing a graph. And so if we take a look at these graphs, we'll notice that on the x-axis we have time, and on the y-axis we, y we have distance from the starting line. So uh, if we take a look down here, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Here is our starting line right here. And then, uh, so that's gonna be, you know, kind of where we're referencing our motion from. Now we've got a little stopwatch right here. And if you take a look at the first, uh, let me uh, bring this down. If you take a look at the first uh, question, um, this is our initial gr initial graph. And basically what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be making our graph look like this, and then we're gonna pl play, and we're gonna see what happens. What does it look like while that motion is occurring, okay? So we want just a straight line from zero to 40 meters and zero to four seconds. So that's what we've got going on right here. So we're gonna click play, and we're gonna watch and see what the person does as they are running. So let's see what they do. Okay, so it looks like our person just kind of runs and they run with a constant velocity to the 40 meter mark. So they ran from the zero to that 40 meter mark. So that's what we're gonna say. Um, and we're, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say that they run forward, right? So we're gonna call this the forward direction. So we're just gonna say that the person runs forward. with a, oh, let's see, All right, there we go. Person runs forward with a constant speed, right? So they're, they're running forward with a constant speed. They're just kind of going at a steady pace. And that's what we can see here, right? Uh, the slope of this line does not change. And the slope of a distance versus time graph is your speed. How could we figure that out? Well, if we take a look, right, we have distance here on the y-axis. Okay, right, this is distance. And then we have time on the x-axis. So remember that our equation for speed is that speed is equal to distance divided by time. So we can actually calculate the speed here of our person, right? They went 40 meters in four seconds. So we could say 40 meters over four seconds. And so that would give us a speed of 10 meters per second, which is pretty fast. Um, so yeah, so that is how fast our person was running there and they were running at that speed the entire time, right? Notice that 10 divided by one, that's 10 meters per second, 20 divided by two, that's 10 meters per second, 30 divided by three, that's 10 meters per second. So we have a constant speed here. The speed is staying the same the entire time. Okay. That's what we mean by constant speed. The speed is staying the same. So then let's take a look at our second scenario. In our second scenario, we are going to be kind of flipping the graph. Okay, so now we've got the line is decreasing. So let's see what that looks like. If I change this up and I change it so that the line is decreasing and I flip it back, notice that now our person is not starting at the start line, right? They're not starting at zero, they're starting at the 40 meter mark. So the position that the person is starting in is backwards, right? It's the opposite. So if we click play here, let's see what happens. Okay, notice, right, our person is now running in the opposite direction because our line is going in the opposite direction, right? It's no longer increasing, it's now decreasing, okay? so. In this case, right, we would say the person is running backwards, but still with a constant speed, okay? So the person, let's wait for my computer to catch up, is running backwards with a constant speed, okay? So again, it's a constant speed, uh, or we can say constant velocity because we're running in a straight line, right? So they would be the same. So we're running backwards with a constant speed, because we are, again, we flip this, 
Notice that we now have a negative slope, okay? So a positive slope means that you're running forwards. A negative slope means that you're running backwards. Remember, we kind of mentioned this a little bit when we talked about velocity. We said that a positive velocity meant that you were going forwards. A negative velocity meant that you were going backwards. It's very similar here. Because the slope is positive in the first one, we're running forwards. When the slope is negative in the second one, we're running backwards, right? So let's look at our next one. Okay, with this one, we've got a second point here. Our line increases and then stays the same. So I'm going to need to add on a point, make this three points, and I need to make this adjustment here. I'm going to start us at zero. We run to 20, and then the line stays flat. So let's see what happens when we have our line increase up to 20, and then it stays flat. Okay, so notice while the line is flat, our person does not move. And that makes sense because if we look here, right, their position, right, their distance from the starting line is staying the same the whole time, right? So when you have a flat line here, that means that the person is not moving. So what is the per what did the person do here again? Let's rewatch it real quick. The person is running up to 20 meters. Once they get to 20 meters, they stop. So the person runs to 20 meters and then stops. So again, when we see that flat line, that means that there, your position is not changing. And so therefore your uh, position is not changing and therefore you're not moving. So when you have a flat line, that means that the, the object is not moving at all. All right, let's take a look at another example. We got two more examples and then you're gonna do the remainder on your own. So in this case, we've got two lines, okay? And notice that they're not overlapping lines, right? One of them is a little bit steeper than the other. So let's see what's going on here. Got to change this back to one point. And then let's add on a second runner so we can see what's going on. And let's see, is this the same setup? Yeah, okay, so there is our setup. So there's our graph. Let's see what happens when we run these two. Okay, so the blue person has gotten way out in front of the red person, right? And that makes sense. Again, look at our graph, right? The end point for the blue line is at 40 meters. The end point for the red line is at 20 meters. But let's think about this in terms of speed, right? Who is running faster? Well, we can clearly see that the blue person is running faster, right? They go further in the same amount of time. Both runners run for four seconds, but the blue person gets out in front of the red person. So how would we describe this motion? Well, first thing we're going to say is where do, the, where do they start? Both runners start at zero meters. They both start at zero meters. And that's probably something we could go back and add to the other ones as well. Both of them start at zero meters. The blue runner runs faster than the red runner and ends at 40 meters. The red runner ends at 20 meters. Okay, so the blue runner is running faster than the red runner. Now, how can we know that just by looking at the graph? The blue line has a steeper slope, okay? The blue line has a steeper slope than the red line. And because it has a steeper slope, that means that that runner is running faster than the red line, okay? Let's go ahead and go back and add where did our runner start? So the runner starts at zero meters. Let's see, here the person starts at 40 meters, right? Because that's where the line starts at 40 meters. And then in the first one, the person starts at, starts at zero meters. Because my computer's slow, it keeps miscapitalizing. Okay. 
All right, so that's how we would describe that motion, right? Let's take a look at one more. All right, so we've got our crisscross lines here. So the blue line is increasing. It looks like it's about the same. The red line is decreasing. So I need to get this where I can see the red line. Bring that up here. Okay, so let's see what happens when we run this motion. Okay, so the blue runner, oops, let's restart, sorry. So the blue runner is starting at zero meters. The red runner is starting at 40 meters. When we click play, the blue runner runs forward and the red runner runs backwards. And notice that they uh, pass each other, right? They pass each other right at that point. Oh, let's see. I can stop. I can do it. Okay, so right at this point, they pass each other, and then the blue runner keeps running forward. The red runner keeps going backwards. Who's running faster here? Who's running faster here? Well, our blue runner runs the full 40 meters, whereas the red runner only gets about 30 meters. And so the blue runner is the one who's running faster. So how can we describe this motion? Okay. The red runner starts at 40 meters. The blue runner starts at zero meters. Okay, so the red runner starts at 40. The blue runner starts at zero. The red runner runs forward while the red runner runs backwards. Okay, and then the blue runner runs faster than the red run. Okay, so the red runner starts at 40 meters. The blue runner starts at zero meters. The red runner runs forward. Uh, oh, sorry, the red runner runs, uh, let's see, the blue runner runs forward. Blue runner runs forward while the red runner runs backwards. The blue runner runs faster than the red runner. It's steeper slope, they went further. And let's just say where they end as well. The blue runner ends at 40 meters and the red runner ends at 10 meters. Okay, so that would be a full description of their motions, all right? Any questions? Well, obviously you can't ask questions because we're recording a video. If you have questions, please shoot me an email. So what you need to do now is you need to draw graphs based on these descriptions, okay? So uh, if you want, you can open up that Gizmos website. Uh, the link is at the top of this document and you can kind of play around and try to figure out uh, what the graphs